Hi, David and Diane. Hopefully you guys are here. And Jessica, thank goodness you guys all waited for me. I was late. Hello, how are you? Hello. Oh, I was panicking. We were inside just talking, losing track of time. All of a sudden I'm like, oh crap, I'm late. <laughs> and here I was like about to post on Facebook. Is there one today? But I have things to do. So I figure I will just let that Zoom thing spin around telling me waiting for the host. Until... Well, and I was just about to go on to Facebook and go like, I'm coming. Anybody, <laughs> I'm coming. So thank you very much for the three of you for being so patient and waiting. No problem. I was doing exactly the same thing as Jessica, just letting it spin and doing the bank wreck. So I was busy doing that. Same here. Awesome. I finished a bank wreck. So we're yeah. just being productive. <laughs> awesome. And we have somebody oh. new today. We have David, who is, yeah. we're not live yet, guys. I'm going to go live in a minute. I'm just, uh, but yeah, David is actually one of um, the accountants that I'm working with through bootcamp. And he were, were actually, it was requested that we talk, and I forgot to do this last week. Lisa Mueller came on last week because she wanted us to talk about um, like audit insurance. Mm -hmm. And so David is, you know, providing the accountant opinion of what he knows, which is not, you know, it's, it's limited, but yeah. So we thought, you know what, that's great. He knows more about it from the accountant side than I do. So yeah. And now Lisa's not here because she probably came and was like, where's Tanya? <laughs> But that's okay. Okay, so let me get everything to get set up on Facebook. I need the invitation link first. Oh, Jessica, this is a 13 page bank rec, so I think I will take a little bit longer. To do it. Uh, <laughs> well, this one, the statement was about 11 pages, but because of the bank feeds and the fact that I do the continual close. At, you know, it's just a matter of enter the ending balance, everything zeroes out and just click finish and say, yeah. Report. yeah, perfect. Yeah, if I had to do it from the beginning, just checking one by one, it's too late oh. on a Friday afternoon <laughs> for me to focus on that. That would be a job for Monday. I charge way more to people who do not want to integrate and use QBO for that because I'm like, no, I don't bankrupt that way anymore, guys. So yeah, no, do I. I. Yeah, no, this client's a Sage 50 client and I and I log into their system through Sage Drive. So oh, wow. uh, to do the bank rec. So yeah. All right. Okay. I'm just getting us almost live on Facebook now. So I want to post in a group. Bookkeeper's corner. Next. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, so title beyond new cloud. Can't spell today. Again, hashtag. I need to just nice to meet you, David. <laughs> oh yeah, you're muted. <laughs> oh yeah, you're muted, David. Sorry. Is that better? It is. Okay. Nice to meet you both, Diane and Jessica. Yeah. Likewise. Look, okay. Go live. Turn my volume down. I swear these two dogs know when we are, it's Friday at this time because, oh, I can bug mummy. <laughs> of course they do. Of course they do. Okay. We are officially live on Facebook. So thank you very much, everybody who is joining us now or watching us later. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Absolutely. This is the good thing about Fridays. I actually look forward to this because I know it means it's Friday and it's then the end of the week is then. So yes. We've got some new faces um, or a new face at this point right time right now. So we'll 
go around, um, introduce all of ourselves. Um, I guess other than David, we are probably just going to be giving shorter ones because <laughs> most people are probably watching this know all of us from previous recordings or previous sessions. Um, but I guess so. I'm Tanya Hiltz, um, founder of Cloud Bookkeeping Services and Tanya's Bookkeepers Bootcamp. And and why don't we do something, what you're looking forward to doing this weekend? And I'm actually looking forward to, this is going to sound crazy, I'm looking forward to working. I have two big things that have been sitting and sitting and sitting. So if I focus this weekend to do them, that will be a huge relief off my chest. And my daughter and husband are both working all weekend anyway, so there's nobody here to humor me. Okay. All right. So Jessica, you are next on my, in my order. <laughs> I am Jessica Fox from Florida Virtual Bookkeeper, uh, known as Bandora Fox on Facebook. And this weekend, I am looking to hopefully not working. I am a recovering workaholic, so it is a conscious effort for me to stay away from my desk. And sometimes I'll come just to do, you know, do a backup or send a file. And next thing I know, three hours are gone and I got all this stuff done. So the only work I want to get done this weekend is I need to catch up on some webinars, recordings, you know, that I wasn't able to attend. And I just have it on my to-do list as past to watch this stuff. Uh, but I just look forward to spending time with family, going out, drinking coffee, getting fresh air. Air, maybe watching some football on Sunday, even though Super Bowl is next week. So it will just be, I think the Pro Bowl is this weekend, but I'll take any football. I don't care. I'm not picky. Awesome. So in other words, I will check in with you all weekend and be like, you're not working, right? <laughs> I used to have an accountability partner to make sure that I wasn't working, especially at night. My problem is after my husband goes to bed and my kids are in bed, I was like, Netflix, book, work, and I'm usually working. <laughs> I exactly. Have to next, myself away. Next thing you know, you've just binge watched a whole season. You know, yeah, you got a ton of work done, but you're like, it's four o'clock in the morning. I got to go to bed. <laughs> but I am very productive at night. My entire book was written after 9 p.m. So I cannot complain. Whenever I'm stuck on something, if it requires creativity and imagination, just leave it until the middle of the night. I'm like you. I totally get it. I'm an idol. I'm trying to be good and get in bed early because I don't get a lot of sleep. So I'm trying to go and I figure if I'm in bed nine out or 12 hours, I get six hours sleep. So I'm trying, I'm trying, but Maybe yeah, but I get it. This year making progress. So it, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. But yeah, same thing with me, the creative juices, they're going, you know, definitely the wee hours of the morning. All right, Diane, you are next in my well, hi, happy Friday again. I'm Diane Mueller, and I am the founder of Soma Small Business Solutions 30 years ago, and recently Trifold Bookkeeper Advisors. So yeah, that's, that's who I am. Awesome. All right. And I used to be very much like Jessica, but now I tend to close the door at five o'clock and don't come back in. Awesome. And what are you looking forward to this weekend? You know, this weekend, probably cleaning my house, which is really, you'd almost <laughs> rather work, right? Awesome. But I do, I have uh, got some stuff to get caught up that uh, have been needing to be done for a while now. So I'm going to spend some time doing that. And then, of course, usually, you know, playing on the beach with Mr. Marlowe. Awesome. Awesome. All right. David, you are next. Hello everyone, nice to be part of the group this time. Thank you, Tanya, for inviting me. So I'm, I'm a CPA, CA uh, in the GTA area, Toronto, Canada. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, participating, learning from all of you and perhaps sharing one or two uh, pointers that I've, uh, from my experience, found helpful. And uh, it's a pleasure to be with the group. Uh, this weekend, I'm looking forward to spending some time with some friends uh, planning a nice dinner Saturday night and then enjoying a walk outdoors with my wife. That's how we like to spend some of our free time just to chill nice. uh, in between our busy work weeks. So awesome. that's what's happening for me this weekend. Awesome. Very nice. And then Carol. Sorry, I'm late to the party. All the uh, links I had in my calendar weren't working. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Anyways, I got it through the Facebook, but... Um, yeah, this, this will be the new permanent one. There was issues with the other one with people connecting, so I just scrapped the old one. This will be the new permanent link. Oh, okay. 
at least good. for the next like 40 or the next like 80 weeks or something like that. So perfect. Exactly. Um, well, I'm Carol Kostachuk. I have my bookkeeping business, Carolyn Call Office Assistance in Maple Ridge, BC. And this weekend, I will be working, <laughs> finishing up GSTs and PSTs because I got a big project to do next week. And I have a life under wraps at the moment, but something may be changing on Monday. I can't talk about it. Okay, well then I expect a call or an email on Monday. You know that, right? A message I can't talk about not. it, but I have, I have a huge second meeting. Um, and um, yeah, and then in February, of course, I'm running away to Mexico, so I got to get everything done. <laughs> okay, reminder, follow up with Carol on Monday. Yes. Awesome. Okay. And then we have Lisa Mueller who is watching and Lisa actually, I, when she was on last week with us, um, I actually forgot there was a specific topic she wanted to discuss. So we're going to discuss that today. So I'm glad you're listening, Lisa. So feel free to type in, you know, chime in if you've got any questions. Um, I will do my best to watch the comments or come in and join us at any point in time. And then Bob Sweets. Hi, Bob. Bob's going to listen while he works and we're bringing Lily in right now. So before we get to the topic, we'll maybe give Lillian a chance to introduce herself and if she gets in here. Nope. Okay. We'll give her time. We'll give her time to get in. So the topic that Lisa had actually was asking me about, and I thought this is perfect to, to bring up on here, is with regards to audit insurance. Hey, Lillian, how are you? Hey. All right. So we're just getting started. So did you want to do a quick introduction and to, about who you are and something you're looking forward to this weekend sure i'll go first oh we've already yeah we've already finished you're the last one. Oh, okay sorry <laughs> no I, don't, okay. I was like wow everybody's shy hi everybody <laughs> i'm lillian larson and i'm based out of boston mass and um i've been in bookkeeping for 18 plus years and that's my story and i'm sticking to it awesome Okay, so back to the topic, audit insurance. So it's funny, Lisa was asking about that. Um, and what I have, um, what we do essentially, so I said this, <coughs> excuse me, sorry everybody. So we self-insure, so there's e e o insurance, commercial liability, and audit insurance. And audit insurance is something that I kind of saw creeping up um, with accountants but there's nothing to bookkeepers. It's only available to accountants as far as my knowledge. And of course, this is why I, David knows a little bit about it. And he's, you know, he can talk about that when, when we bring him into this. Um, and that's why I've asked him specifically to be here because I thought it would be great to get an accountant's version who is at least a little bit familiar with the product. So what we do, we don't do T2s. This is not part of the, you know, so not part of the books. This is just on your general taxes. So the, the audit insurance, um, we self-insure essentially. This gave us last year an additional $3,000 in revenue that we would not have got otherwise, and that tends to go up every year. And what that covers somebody for is it's 20, we just charge $25 per person per return. Um, and if they're a couple, $35 for the couple instead of $25 each. And then what we do is that covers them for any post and pre-assessment reviews. This is not to include anything if you've got, you know, if, if you're a sole prop, that part of it's going to be different um, because again, we're doing the books or, you know, we'll interact a little differently. So we don't really offer it to anybody with, that's got a, a sole prop or using the T2125s on. But straightforward return, again, we will handle a pre and post assessment reviews. If they want to know where the return is, they can call us. We can look that up through CRA represented client. If there's any questions throughout the year that they have for us, we will handle that. Um, the return on that, so again, we've got, all, and all you need to do is have yourself, oh, look at the baby. Somebody <laughs> else wants to get involved. <laughs> anyway. He, he so, needs his cuddles every day. That's okay. okay. That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> So essentially, um, basically, again, people don't like calling CRA and all they have to do is be, you know, receive a pre or post assessment review once. We all know they panic. They don't know what to do with the letter. 
we keep scanned digital copies of everything I use to prepare a tax return anyway. So most of it is like, you know, send your T4, send your, rec your donation receipt, send your medical receipts. I've already got scanned copies of that. It takes minutes to pull it out and send it off. We used to provide that service for free. Other people don't provide that for free or it's built into their prices. And then um, I will ask David about that in a moment as well, because he used to work in an accounting firm. So he's, he's that used to basically have that built into their prices. So, um, so we do that. And the time that Sandra, who actually handles the pre and post reviews, the time she actually spent working on it last year is about 30 minutes. So we made $3,000 additional for 30 minutes of work. It, may at one point have worked out the other way, but considering we already have that, we're not dealing with, you know, an audit on a business return or the business part of it. We're just dealing with the personal. <coughs> it just makes it so much easier and, and easier for the client, easy for us to handle because we know what we've got to do. We pull it, upload it to CRA and it's done. And it's definitely an extra service that's valuable to the client. So before I actually ask specific questions of David, is there anybody out there either listening or watching? Um, Charlie Price has joined us. Hey, Charlie. Um, welcome. Um, he's actually the admin of another group, and it's marketing um, for accountants. So um, maybe, Charlie, if you just want to put your group, your Facebook group link, just in case anybody is looking and, and wanted to pop in and join into the group, feel free to do so. So does anybody out there, has anybody offered any type of an audit insurance before? Is there anything that you've thought of from the bookkeeper? I guess it's from the T1 perspective. No, I don't do taxes at all. Okay, perfect. Nice and easy for you. Yeah. All right. So David, so when you and I were talking about it, because again, it came up with in conversation with, with in one of our groups, because David's a boot camper, and then David, so are Carol and Lillian as well too, so um, fellow boot campers on the call, but so it came up in the conversation as to they couldn't see the value, and they said, we're already doing this for free, we're doing a lot, and we offer clients the choice, hey, if they don't want to pay for this, they can go to CRA, rep a client, and look it up themselves, or they can call CRA themselves, and especially with the new way of calling CRA, we're no longer getting through and being on hold for two minutes. We're holding until somebody answers, which is a minimum of 30 minutes. So that time needs to be worth something. Absolutely. If we need to dig into something a little bit more. So those of you who aren't charging for something like that, I would recommend that you would. And I'm assuming with the CRA, it's probably the same types of issues. If they do any of their post or pre-assessment reviews on the individuals, it's probably not a lot of information. You can hopefully be able to upload and probably long wait times when you call in. Is that accurate to say, Jessica or Lillian? Yes, I know I don't do taxes myself, but I okay. collaborate with some tax preparers and they do offer audit insurance as well. Some okay. are self-insured like you are, others use a third party because yeah, the, if they need to handle something that requires a phone call to the IRS, depending on the time of year, they'll be on hold for a while. Yeah. Even though I don't do taxes myself, but because I do file some informational returns, I was on hold for 40 minutes this week. <laughs> and nice. it's like, I only, some, I only had to do it once a week, but it, it wears on me. So I, I have seen it work very similarly in the US, but once again, it's not something that I personally handle. Okay. And trust me, I have a client from last year that's sucking me dry this year. CRA is giving the run around and I've gone over it and over and over it. So on, trust me, next year, a, I'm going to be offering the insurance thing. Uh, is that on an individual return or on a business return? It, no, it's on an individual return. Really? And CRA is giving you a run around? On well, it's, it's not so much the run around as, oh, we don't understand this paperwork. Denied. Oh, you got the wrong year on there. Denied. Oh, and of yeah, course, each time it takes six to eight weeks for them to process it. So I just got a text from him the other day going, oh, I think I've waited long enough. Can you check and see if Sarah has done it now? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, and if you were to so. turn around and say, listen, either pay an additional amount or here's where you can get it for free. And that's why I say any client, oh, with brain deb into any clients who get upset. I'm just like, you know what? You've got a way to do it for free. You can do it yourself. Sign up or call. It's that simple. Yeah. Or follow the instructions in the letter because that's all we do. Well, that's going to be in my ones for this year as per what I learned from you last year. Awesome. 
Awesome. So <laughs> then David, when we were talking, I had asked you, you know, from the accountant firm, is that something that you guys had done? So fill us in on that part of the conversation, if you could, please. Okay. In my experience in a public accounting firm, what we used to do is we used to build in, as you were talking about Tanya self-insuring, where we would say, this is our fee. And one of the components of that fee is we're estimating, should you be have uh, inquiries from CRA, we will at no additional charge take care of that for you. And clients like that white glove service. And so that's what we used to do at the uh, public accounting firm that I was at. Exactly. But that was built into the rate. So then back in the, I know that was several years ago, but what was your rate for a basic return? Just a basic, you know, one T for, you know, not, nothing fancy. 150 was the very lowest we would go. Exactly. So for any bookkeepers out there who are charging less, I know why I charge less than that. My basic for one return when I'm not dealing with seniors because I give them a bit of a discount is $75. So even at that, it's $75. You add on the $20 or $25 for CRA insurance, it's still at 100 and that's current rates which was less when the accounting firm's rates was. So, and, and it's just, uh, again, the people that I'm speaking to don't see that there's value in that service that we're offering. And there absolutely is value. And the accounting firms do charge for that built in. So you can either up your price, build it, build it in, or give them the opportunity to take it or deny it. You now with us, if they deny it, we actually have them sign off on our engagement letter, there's a little spot on the bottom that says that they're aware what CRA insurance covers and a little blurb and they are declining it. So that way they say, well, I wasn't even aware of that. We can just push that right back in their faces and well, you signed it. So now you there, so for accountants, there is actually, instead of self-assuring, um, there is a what's called audit shield. Is that right, David? That's only yes. available to accountants. So what is your understanding of, of audit shield? So there is a firm called Accountancy Insurance. They're a firm that started in Australia in 2003. And they've um, expanded to include uh, New Zealand and Canada. The, the purpose of the program is they are a true broker, insurance broker. Yep. And I did some research in preparation for this call just to share some further details with you about the product. Awesome. So basically what happens is there is an insurance policy between accountancy insurance and the accounting firm. So those are the two parties to the insurance. Only registered CPAs can enter into these agreements with accountancy insurance. And the way it works is uh, accountancy insurance would mail to all business T2 clients a proposal, a marketing letter explaining this service. And then working with accountancy insurance, the client would pay the accountant a certain cost, depending on what the charge out rate of the accountant is. So there's a flat fee per client based on what the charge out rate of the CPA is. Then the accountant is invoiced for a lower amount and that is the invoice by accountancy insurance to the accountant. So what happens is the client pays the accountant the suggested cost, which is X plus Y, and the accountant is invoiced by accountancy insurance for an amount of X. So the accounting firm makes that little difference. It's considered a value added service on the part of the CPA to right. the CPA's clients. So there's a margin there that the accountant would make on that value added service fee. Then what happens is the underwriter is Lloyd's of London. And uh, what uh, accountancy insurance has found is that 
about 25% of Ontario clients from their experience have signed up for this service, which is a significant number. It is. And the funny thing is, sorry, I'm just going to jump in for a minute here because Please. we've got one of my clients, the same one that I'm, I'm, I'm that's still on desktop, my last desktop client. Um, and the last one that I go to, I visit them every second week. They actually got a bill and their tax return. It's a straight, a little bit complex of a situation, um, but straightforward, you know, they only pay about $3,000 for their return, three or $4,000 because a little bit of, um, you know, more complex issues. However, the bill for this would have been $3,000 for the audit insurance to cover. And basically that would cover the hours of the accountant to work on any CRA reviews or audits. Exactly. Now they, I saw this in there and they were going to pay it because I pay all their bills. They put it in for me to pay. I said, no, I said, don't take this. I said, first off, they don't have the source documents. So we're going to have to pull out the source documents, get them all to them. You're going to pay me to do that. Um, I've handled all the reviews in the past and I still, are there. again, yes, they're the, still the, one of the last that I hourly bill, but I said to them, even the hours that they have had me, they've been with me 10 years. There is still not enough that they would have paid me. There's no way they would have paid me even hundred or $1,500 worth of all the reviews and audits that I've handled for them in that time. So I can handle it cheaper. So I said, really, you want to pay that a year? Whereas you, you would have paid me less than half of that in 10 years of audits or reviews. So and it, it, very, it very much depends on the difference. But personally, I think if the accountant is, does not have all the source documents, you know, or maybe you only have to pull the account in on something really complex, but I just don't know that the insurance would be worth it in the situations I have seen. I'm sure there are situations that, you know, it would definitely be worth it, um, but kind of a roll of the dice if you're looking at $3,000 a year for the insurance. It's, I don't know, I think, like you say, David, it's a value add, and I guess that's where people just have to, you know, weigh it out. Again, maybe the larger companies, but this company was not that large because I don't deal with the big guys. So, so one, one example that uh, accountancy insurance gave me to just help you understand the numbers, let's say you have a, a T2 business client that you're working on and your charge out rate, according to the chart they provided, is under 315 an hour, which many in our group would fall under. And so there would be a flat fee of $340 that the client would pay to the accountant. The uh, accountant would be invoiced for $250. And so the accountant recovery there would be $90. And the coverage would be up to $10,000 worth of the CPA's time each year. Now, so that's like an example of what they're offering. Right. So there was a question on here. So Lisa, by the way, Brian Tritt, if you're still watching. Hi, Brian. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Leanne. And hi, Brad. Um, so Lisa had just asked, um, you know, that's the thing. Who does the work if there's an audit? Does audit insurance cover our time as bookkeepers? It does not. It covers the billable time of the accountant's firm that has purchased it. So our time to pull everything together and submit to the accountant is not covered. So we're either eating that if we're value priced or if we've got that specifically set as an out of scope work, then we're billing directly for that as well. And again, most of the time, what are the audits? The audits are simple paper, you know, simple letters saying, great, here's what we need. I mean, the last couple of years, what advertising fees, um, and consulting fees has been one, the consulting and professional fees has been one that's been pretty big. Again, takes me half an hour to pull everything together, send it in QBO, even easier, because if you've got your source documents attached to every transaction in QBO, you pull your list, pull your source docs out, send it off, you're done. There's, you don't have to go right like through any paperwork. Again, not saying there are not times where we wouldn't need to pull an accountant in on an audit if you've got something really sticky and the auditor just doesn't believe I, I, I don't understand, but I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's times where they would need to pull them in. But for the most part, 
it's mostly pulling the paperwork together. And as long as the books are done right in the first place and you have a proper source document to back up everything, you know, I, I, I just, and I come from an insurance background and this is one thing where I just think, wow, they went overboard. But again, some people out there see the value in it. And again, my clients are all smaller. So I couldn't see the value in any of it for my clients because again, they're still having to pay for my time. So those are some oh, highlights. Uh, yeah. again, the name of the firm is uh, Accountancy Insurance. Uh, they have offices, uh, as I said, in uh, New Zealand, Australia, Canada. There's a 1-800 number if you're looking for more information. And for some clients, it might be helpful. Hey, and again, I think it would be an individual. Look at the client individual. How complex is their situation? You know, do they not keep their proper source documents? Maybe is there something else that you might want to do? Something like that. But that, again, is only for accountants, bookkeepers, or non-accountants, non-CPAs do not qualify for that. So anybody else who's doing taxes, you don't qualify that. You have to look for selfish, you know, a selfish insuring potentially. But again, this is not the same as E and O insurance. E and O insurance is still completely separate, um, separate entity at all. And same thing with your C, your commercial general liability insurance. Sorry, can you separate. say that again? Who doesn't qualify? What? Say that again. Book bookkeepers or tax preparers that are not CPAs. Do not qualify for this insurance. Nope. It's only <coughs> offered to accountant firms. You need to be a CPA. Okay. So I would love to hear everybody's opinions on all of this. Now that we've kind of thrown all the information out there and then give anybody who's still watching, especially Lisa, a chance to ask more questions. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. <laughs> everybody's quiet. So... Are there, let me ask, then throw this out there. Are there any clients that you have that you think this would be something that, that would be good for them to have? Well, this is only good if we're preparing taxes, correct? Any kind of taxes. And I, I'm assuming this is like multi. <laughs> yes, yes. This is again, because the E&O insurance covers the actual, covers any, you know, anything in the books itself. So if we messed up something in the books and actually messed something up, so this is just straight the tax return, just, yeah, straight on the tax return. Yeah. So what's so, interesting as far as the types of uh, services or engagements that would be covered, it's uh, personal tax, including processing review, matching, special assessment, uh, business audits, payroll audits, GST, pre-assessment, post-assessment reviews, uh, WCB, Ontario Employer Audit Program, and some other programs that they could uh, let you know about directly. Okay, that's interesting that it does include all of them and not just the taxes. So I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I know there are sometimes where WCB audits, you know, or, or the WSIB audits can be a, a pain. That's a worker's comp for I know it's, it's, it's different names everywhere else. Payroll audits, again, I just went through a payroll audit with somebody. Again, I think if, if you're using good software that documents everything and you have your source documents, I handled a three-year payroll audit. Again, half an hour for me to pull everything and send it off. And as long as it's all there, you're not having any discussion with CRA. They've just confirmed all the source documents, the reports, the source documents, everything matches and sending it through. I think the biggest thing, and this might be where it's really good, is if you've got somebody who's using subcontractors, then where does that line draw? So like, I've actually, there, I spent a lot of time. I still probably only build out about $500 to the client. Um, but dealing with a, are they a sub or are they not a sub? And I'm still challenging. I actually had given up and um, I spoke to somebody from the Canadian, Payment Asso or Canadian Payroll Association who told me to challenge it further again. So I'm going to challenge it further again. And it's somebody who is actually was subcontracting and doing driving, but they were driving the, the, the truck of the company they were subbing to. So that's why they were saying their tools and if they're using their tools to do the work, then no, it's straight. But where I was fighting with them is said, well, no, their tool of the trade is the $10,000 that they invested into their driver's license to get their special class driver's license to get that in that training. That was their actual tool. 
And apparently the Canadian Payroll Association agrees with me. So I'm going back to fighting over that. So again, certain circumstances I can, I can, I guess, see where that would be definitely helpful um, for sure. Kathy, you've joined us. Do you have any input on there? I came in too late to have anything to say. I'm talking about the audit here. insurance. Oh, oh so okay. tip, Tiffany actually says audit insurance. So Tiffany is um, a CPA as well. So she says audit insurance is difficult to get unless you have large volume corporate clients. Yeah. Which makes sense when you're looking at the cost. And then Lisa's asked, I'm wondering how other bookkeepers handle audits. Do you handle most yourself or hand them over to the account to handle? Do you charge extra for the time or is it included as part of your package? So I will just answer quickly on me and then give everybody else a chance to answer because then while you guys are all answering, I'm probably going to have to mute you because I've had a plumber here for two days and I think he needs me for a minute. So I handle most straightforward audits um, or reviews. So I handle basic CRA issues um, for the client. That's built into my price. It's, it's, it's value price. It's already built in, into my original price but they know that I do not handle an in-depth full-on audit as part of that if CRA wants to come out. So I basically kind of say, you know what, if it's gonna be half an hour, an hour, no problem, I'm gonna handle that. However, in the 10 years I've been bookkeeping in this area, because I am so precise with collecting the proper source documents for every transaction, I have never once charged somebody extra other than that, that, that payroll one and they're an hourly client as it is. So any of my, my fixed clients, I have never charged more because I've gotten everything done in 30 minutes or less just simply because I've got all the source documentation and they pass with flying colors because we have it all. So I'd love for you guys to talk about it and I'm going to mute myself while I talk to my plumber. So any okay. yes. I, I I'll go first then. So I would handle anything that has to do with sales tax. So if they get a GST audit, if they get a PST audit, or if they were to get a payroll audit. Because in my mind, those are the things that are in the books and that I know about because I've probably done them or I've worked with the bookkeeper that has done them. So something like that, absolutely. I don't do any tax, T1 or T2. So if a federal audit came back, I would not have no I would pass that on to the accountant that filed it so that they can have the opportunity to deal with the uh, government on what they filed if they needed information from me absolutely provide the information documents that kind of thing source documents but uh, I wouldn't be the person that would be connecting with the uh, auditor at Canada Revenue Agency that would be me From my experience uh, as an accountant, whenever there is a, a federal audit, um, it's time consuming. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of documentation perhaps to explain why certain deductions were taken by the taxpayer. And uh, the fees can add up quite high. So yeah. uh, from that perspective, I can see clients as we've talked about where they have a, sig a significant business this audit insurance may be something to consider. Yeah. But even, even if they're not a larger person and they get a, a company and they get a federal audit, I don't know federal income tax law. So why would I get involved in that for sure? Uh, it would be, it would be a total hands off for me. Yes. Other than providing documentation. Right. You'd support the CPA as yeah. you're working with the CRA auditor. Absolutely. Yeah. But I have gone through uh, provincial sales tax audits and GST audits. There are a whole lot more about what's in the books and just right. proving the uh, actual claim that was put in. So those I can handle. Very good. Nobody else chiming in here? No. no. <laughs> Especially when you come in late, it's like. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where are you working from, Deb? Uh, Colorado. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. Lots of snow there? 
Not so much. Um, it's been pretty cold and a lot of wind. Yeah, I think we've uh, surpassed Wyoming for the wind now. I think everything's shifted and so we get all the wind and our humidity has increased substantially what it used to be. So yeah, it's pretty cold. Um, I was gonna say it's almost been a year since the cyclone, March cyclone bomb hit. So, so far so good, no more of those. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah, that was not pleasant. I don't care to live through that again. But anyway, this is the property I live on. Whee! You can see that. I have uh, a half section. So, yep. Well, since Sam is not available, I wanted to ask a question. It's a different topic, if that's okay. Uh, for yeah. those that are listed in the QuickBooks Pro Advisor directory, are you at, having issues responding to leads? I'm sorry, those in the QuickBooks Pro Advisor program, are we having problems with? Replying to leads when somebody contacts you through the directory. You mean finding them or? or no, sending a reply. Uh, no, for the past funny. two weeks, anytime I get a lead from the Pro Advisor directory and I reply, I get an error. Ooh. And then I try again, I get another error. But they seem to be getting my replies because most of them do end up scheduling a discovery call and I've converted two into clients, but it's a little disconcerting because you don't know what the status is. And I reported it to QuickBooks the first time it happened and uh, heard crickets. So I was just wondering if it was just me or what? Um, I haven't had any leads, so I can't speak. I do know QuickBooks has been really wonky on a lot of things. Oh, gosh, yes. Ugh. The 1099s, which is not the oh. time to be wonky. Yeah. Um, every time I need to do something, I have to go into incognito, come back, sign in, mm -hmm. sign out to try to finish something. It's just been really, really wonky. Yeah, they picked the wrong time of year to be tweaking features. Like a week or two ago, you know, we were talking here about changes to the user interface. And as soon as I log off, there was a change to the front screen that you had like that quick access tab that looked a little reminiscent to desktop instead of the virtual dashboard. And for a few days, you could toggle between the two and then it disappeared. So you had a couple of days to get used to it. Now it's over. Yes, and now I miss it. I'm like, hey, I was getting used to it. I like that. What do you do? <laughs> yeah, I think I, I know that they've been going through a lot of back end changes. So I, I have a feeling it's just kind of hitting everything and every day it's kind of something new. I know. I was just wondering because, you know, uh, I, I was not at QuickBooks Connect, but I did watch uh, anything that was available on YouTube. And I talked to other people and said, oh, they're investing so much money on mm -hmm. the Find a Pro Advisor, making yeah. all these improvements. But right now, it's, it seems broken. Meanwhile, I'm getting all these people that were getting uh, pressure to sign up for their QuickBooks Live Bookkeeping. Uh, one of my new clients, she actually, she thought she was just scheduling an disco a discovery call just to hear about it, see what they had to say. But before they even, uh, the date for the call came, they already charged her card $200. Wow. And she's like, oh, well, no, cancel everything. Wow. <laughs> I don't know, like, I feel like the right hand is not talking to the left hand anymore. Not that they all ever had really good <laughs> internal communication, yeah. but it's worse now. <laughs> Well, what I found is I switched a couple of my attorneys over to the QuickBooks Online Advanced. And what I found was they contact, well, they thought they were contacting them, QuickBooks, but it ended up coming to me because I usually put my email on there. And they were introducing themselves as their QuickBooks manager, which if it had gone to my client, I think it's really confusing because I'll be like, who is that? So I was a little disappointed in that. Um, that they're even reaching out to existing, you know, Qu QuickBooks online. I mean, they're, they're all set up. So I thought that was a little strange. Yeah, they said they weren't going to do that. If you oh, were connected. Oh, they have multiple yeah. times over and over. Yeah. And now they tell you, yes, never mind, we are doing it. Yeah. yeah I thought I created, uh, I raised created a big stink about that a few months ago. So I'm not going to rehash that. Uh, now I'm this week, I'm mad about Chronobooks. They bought Chronobooks, oh, yeah. and I was like, yay, that's great, no big mm -hmm. deal. And that originally said everything will stay the same for now, 
And now I have until February 25th, only QuickBooks Online Advanced companies will have it, which makes no sense to me. I understand you want to give it for free to QuickBooks Online Advanced, but why cannot it be paid for the other tiers? I have clients that don't need the bells and whistles of advanced. They do not need to pay double, but they have app integrations that mess up from time to time. And Chronobooks save me tons of hours. And so now I have to like switch over to, I'm, it looks like it's going to be Rewind, but I'm still mm -hmm. not sure. I'm just not happy about that because Rewind has a lot of positives, but you cannot copy files from one QBO to another. What is that, that part that it doesn't allow you to do to copy files what? Rewind. Uh, see, for example, Chronobooks say uh, you have a nonprofit client that becomes eligible to get the discounted QBO subscription through TechSoup. You cannot have an existing QBO subscription be $50 a year. You will have to start a new account. So with Chronobooks, it was very easy to copy the first file and essentially transfer everything into the new account. And you just go on your merry way. It takes minutes. Mm. Now that Chronobooks will no longer be available, the other backup solutions don't have that. Now, I, I'm not going to lose sleep over that because I, nonprofits is a very small portion. I only do a couple of those per year. And it's just annoying. Like, why are you completely taking it away? I can't understand that you want to make money. Raise the price. I will probably pay it as long as it's not like, you know, your regular annual increases for everything else. Mm. Well, I have actually um, something that I wanted to talk to Jessica and Kathy about, if I can. And that is that Nort VPN. Okay. So I went and I got it and I got the 70% off and I downloaded it and all that went really well. And I turned it on and nothing works anymore on my computer. I can't get emails. I can't get receipt bank. Nothing. <sighs> Have you tried switching to a different server? Uh, yeah, I did two different servers. Hmm. So no, none of my Office that. three, none of my Office three sixty five work. Like nothing. I had to turn it off to get my Outlook emails to come in. Wow, Kathy, do you know about that? Sorry, Diane, I don't have any of those problems and you know I use the same tools. I don't use Receipt Bank, but my Office 365 is perfectly fine. My Outlook is working, my To-Do is working, all of my web browsing is all working. Um, the only challenge I've had is my Amazon Prime video is not happy, but Netflix is fine. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I've got my priorities in the office, right? Um, no, but I haven't had any setting. problems with my Office 365. So what's like, maybe we should connect offline about which I would love you're that. connecting to. Um, I would love that. We're both Kathy. Canadian, right? So yeah. I'd love that, Kathy. Can I contact you next week and maybe sit up some time? in Mexico. Oh, okay. No, so I can't like to contact, contact you. Maybe me before Sunday morning. <laughs> Okay. Or after the tenth of February. <laughs> well, I don't. I, I'm. You're probably crazy busy getting ready to leave, so I don't want to do that. But um, definitely, when you get back, then if we can connect and you can kind of walk me through what's going on, that I, yeah, literally yeah. everything, everything, not one single thing worked. And similar situation for me. on my phone, but. Um, what I discovered after really having to, when I put the, um, the VPN is, is if my phone went to sleep, then there was a setting in there that told me that everything else would go to sleep, including my Wi-Fi. So it took a little time to look at it, but I'm wondering if you go through all your settings, if that's it, or even if you just, I wonder, if, do, do they have like a support? Maybe they if do. you they do. It pretty good. might be a, a, a similar or a known thing that happens and might just be an easy fix, hopefully. I yeah, hope so. Lee, sorry, I'm, I'm caught up and I see there's a Lisa Mueller saying that her Outlook won't work since the VPN either. So we installed all of them Monday, except for I installed on my, my laptop and my desktop over the weekend, last weekend. 
and Leanne installed hers and somehow the settings changed. She had the same thing that you had, Lillian. So she actually got them on chat and they were able to resolve it very quickly for her what the problem was, but none of the rest of the, the, the ones on all of our other ones, the setting was all fine and I've got it on my phone as well too. So again, yes, it's either the settings, they just did another update. So maybe there was a glitch and the update just came out today. So make sure that you update it. But if not, I would check the settings or contact them for support because yeah, they were able to get Leanne up and running in no time. Okay, well, the only thing something. I found, yeah, that doesn't work is I have a client that wants me to VPN into their server. So I can't VPN through my VPN. Yeah. That's yeah. the only thing that- No, I, I mean, this is, this, is, this is really standard stuff, right? It's yeah. just, I'm just running Office 365 and Receipt yeah. Bank and, you know, a hub doc. There's, it should be pretty simple. There shouldn't be any issues, but uh, yeah. Just a setting. Yeah. yeah, something's not quite right. But yeah, if you want to try support and then we'll connect in February if it doesn't work, absolutely. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll give them a call next week and see if it's an easy fix. And otherwise, I'll let, let you, after your holidays, we'll connect and okay. Sounds good. sort it out. I mean, I haven't had it up till now. So another two weeks is not going to, I'll just turn it off until then. <laughs> well, and it's, it's funny that it affects some computers and not others, because when I was installing it, we installed a three computers simultaneously, Leanne on her laptop, Sandra on her desktop, and then myself on the other desktop. We all followed the same steps, but yet Leanne is the one that every time her computer goes to sleep, boom, she's lost the internet just to restart. Huh. So it's interesting that the three of us followed the, apparently the exact same steps, yet somehow the settings were different in each of them, so I don't understand. <laughs> Oh, yeah, my computer, computer, it does go to sleep, but it wasn't, that wasn't the case because right. I was working and it was in the middle of the day and the computers were wide awake and all right. of a sudden everything stops coming in. So to ask the obvious IT question, you did reboot after you installed? I did, yes. Okay. <laughs> I figured you would have, but from an IT brain, we always have to ask that question. When's the yeah. last time you rebooted? Yeah. But it is, I mean, it is quite handy that you can just go down to the bottom of your tray and turn it on and off. But, you know, that's not the point of having it to be, to have to turn it off when you go out to an app or something, right? Right. And that's, uh, it's funny because there's a few sites, which is actually hilarious that their own chat site, you cannot access with the VPN on, which is hilarious because Leanne did it. She got it fixed and she tried to get them back. She had to turn the VPN off to be able to get them. So it's interesting that some sites do and don't. So I feel like skip the dishes. The main site does the, the minute I go to log in, it doesn't. Um, there was like, sometimes I'm looking something up on, on Amazon. I go to click through again and finding that some of their sites don't. So we've just set a standard rule. If you need to use a site that you have to turn it off, sign out of all client apps or shut them down, do what you need to do, turn it back on to sign back in. So. Okay, thank you. I, yeah, I'll uh, figure that out with Kathy. Or, yeah. Awesome. And so I missed the rest of the conversation on the audit insurance. So there doesn't seem to be any extra questions coming in from Lisa or anybody else listening. So hopefully it answered all their questions as well too. And is Lisa still having the same problem with the Outlook with her VPN? Because maybe if I find an answer, I can make sure that uh, she finds out about it too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And just to confirm anybody out there, the Lisa Mueller is no relation to Diane That's Mueller. right. <laughs> That's right. No, <laughs> she's not. She's not. Because I have to, I do have to confirm that all the time because of Bianca Mueller, who is my daughter. Right. <laughs> and is also a bookkeeper in this community. So yeah, Lisa I just, Mueller is no, no relation. Yeah, and I assumed Lisa was for the longest time, and then I finally yeah. asked them. She's like, no, yeah. no relation. <laughs> yeah, and we just told the Mueller's were taking over the bookkeeping world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Watch out, here we come. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, well, it's a small world. You know, and it, the last name is obviously more common than one would think, right? So. Oh, it's, it's, it's really common in Germany, of course, right? It's like John Smith. Oh, so there you go. It's super, super common. Yeah. All right. So Lisa said, yes, she read that you can change settings in Outlook, but Exchange won't let her. 
And that's, I don't know what's going on, Lisa, because I have Outlook Exchange. And yeah, we have so no problem I. with our, no problem with our, now mind you, are you guys talking, because again, I'm still talking to the plumber, are you guys talking about online, like Outlook 365 or Outlook yes. Desktop? Well, well, you know what? It's Outlook Desktop that I but typically. Where's your exchange? It's, it's, my, it's, it's Microsoft 365 Exchange. Okay. So yeah. you're, you're, you and I are on the same exchange. Yeah. Tanya's uh, um, exchange is independent of Office 365. Yes. Yeah, right. I don't so, have 365 at all. I can get I can get it online, but it's a slightly different subscription um, with and, and it just yeah. There's yeah, mine's Office 365 Exchange Business. Yep. Uh, so yeah, fine. you and I both have Business Premium, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's working perfectly fine for me. I get into absolutely every Office product I need. Okay, so it's obviously question. a setting of some sort. And is that what Lisa has too? Ask Lisa if that's what she's got too. Is it Office 365 Premium? or? Okay, so um, if, she's still here because she says, no, well, for her, it's not the desktop. It's the actual app. So um, is it 365, Lisa? App on her phone? Or I guess, yeah, it could be the phone app or just logging into their website. So let's see here. We'll give her a minute or two to hopefully catch up and answer. Because she's been, she's working away while she's listening, so. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that between the three of us, we can get it figured out working for everybody. <laughs> um, she says it's not the business version. Oh, probably but home version. is it version. Office 365 or yeah. Office Student? personal so she said oh i guess it is so it is 365 but whether it's yeah because they have a home version they have a uh business personal student and business yeah. premium but you know if it's office 365 that shouldn't matter right oh, it's just so funny Diane, have some because of these. sometimes business i mean the the higher paid subscriptions get a lot more features mm -hmm. Right, but I've got it working on my phone just fine through the VPN in Outlook. I didn't put it on my phone. Just I know I, I've got like what five or six devices I can put it on, but when I had this problem with my computer, I went, ah, no, I'm going to wait and talk to Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not going to put it on anything else. I'm just trying to log in right now and just see if. I can log in. So again, I go through Rackspace, as Kathy said. I so I'm using the Outlook web app. So it just took me in, no problem. Yeah. So and it's the Outlook web app because I found that Office 365 actually I didn't have as much control over the incoming emails, and I actually did lose business. It had assumed somebody was spam and they weren't, and there was no way for me to completely override it um, because it filtered in the cloud before it even came down into mine. So there's two spam boxes. So even when I logged into the cloud, I'm like, oh, you know, there it is. They found it in the back end. And so now I actually use a, the exchange through Rackspace, which is like a hosted exchange um, that enables me to do that. But I have 100% of my emails get through, which just means that I have to manually go, yep, that's junk, delete, delete, delete. But yeah. I would rather do that than miss the then lose, then lose uh, business. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's why I don't use Gmail as well. The exact same thing happened with Gmail. Yeah. It was and safe. You're not going to use the other features of Office 365. You don't need to pay for it, right? Yeah. Like exactly. I use Planner and SharePoint. Like I use right. all of those features. Teams. So it makes yeah. it worth it. Yeah. In Teams. Yeah. Like it just so makes it worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You're right. And I mean, I use Word, Excel, PowerPoint. You know, I use those, but I also get those because I get my desktop version extremely cheap through my husband's company. They get them, um, they basically get license to give it to all the staff. So I pay $11, $19, just went up to $19 for two licenses of the professional version. Yeah. So I just buy that new one every year. And then I think I pay an extra $11 to get the, to get the DVD and that comes out every two years. So for that price, those prices, you can't beat it. <laughs> exactly. Right. Kathy, what's your email address? Kathy, C-A-T-H-Y. Yeah. Dot. Did you want to say it out loud? I don't think she wants to say that out loud. 
She didn't want to say it out loud? My profile. <laughs> I was going to say, I can just connect you guys. Yeah, I wouldn't put I that just... out there for the world to grab. Why don't I just connect you guys? Because I, I know both of you. So. Okay, that would be great. Thank you. You're welcome. That's we'll Kathy that Badry's out there. And we're all related in some way or the other. Because ah! the Badry is a changed last name. So all of my husband's family comes from a nitty little bitty town in Alberta called Heisler. And there's like, I don't know, 5,000 of them or something. And we're all related. Oh, wow. That's bizarre. Yeah, and they don't go very far from Alberta. So Crazy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's great. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. Oh, yes, you're very welcome. Yeah, I've already sent that email. So yeah. I didn't make, I just I said, there it. you go. It wasn't fancy, but there you go. And then so Lisa just responded. It was the home version. Um, she lets her university kids use it. Yeah. So, well, we will get back to you, Lisa. If we, if there's a solution for that, then maybe, you know, report back next week. Diane, if you can find a solution and we can share that out with Lisa or for sure. again, connect you guys or whichever. Yeah. All right. Well, we've gone we'll over. it out. Exactly. So we've got over time. So it is 436. So we will cut it short here. But thank you very much, everybody who joined us. Again, feel free to join live. Deb, you didn't talk very much in the background today, but unless it was when I was gone. <laughs> but it's good to have you back. Oh, thanks. She's, yeah, Deb, you've been just swamped. The last Absolutely swamped. Well, I'm glad you found time out of your swamp schedule today because I know you said you're, st you're still in it. You're still yeah. in oh yeah, yeah. Until tis the, the 31st season. boy it's just oh, coming down tis the season yeah so it in, is so in other words if we see you next week then you're ahead of things if not then right. we'll have a glass of wine for you right <laughs> fair enough works all right bye, -bye guys have a good thank weekend you, thank you again so much bye. david for joining us and join yes. us anytime pleasure thanks, 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 thanks everybody have a great bye -bye. weekend bye-bye